Hi everyone, in my last video we talked about installing Java on Windows. Today we are going to talk about installing Java on Mac and some fine points we tend to miss out. On Windows we can choose the location where exactly we want to install Java. In my last video I installed Java in C program files Java location. But on Mac the installation process is streamlined and does not prompt you to choose the installation directory. Instead the JDK is installed to a standard system location. This location is managed by the system to ensure that Java can be easily found and used by applications and development tools. Now, to find out where Java is installed, we need to use the utility. So there's a particular utility on our machine. Let me show it for you. Okay, so that utility is usr lib exec java underscore home hyphen v all right let me press enter so we get this particular output so it says the operation couldn't be completed unable to locate a java runtime it means we get this output because java is not currently installed on my machine so we'll have to install java on our mac first just like windows we'll also open google and we'll simply search for java jdk download all right so we'll open the java official website from here, you can download the long-term support version. At the time of this recording, it is JDK 21, as we can see. It is the latest long-term support release of Java Standard Edition platform. Okay, so we can select the JDK 21 tab. Since I'm on Mac, I'll scroll down and I'll select Mac OS operating system. Now, we can either go with x86 or ARM download. This is ARM download or x86. Which one should we go with? Actually, there are two types of Mac architecture or Mac chips. Let me show my whiteboard here. Okay, so there are two types of Mac architecture or Mac chips. One is Intel based Macs x86 or the older chip and the new type of Macs which is Apple Silicon Mac or we can see the latest chips. Now, I'm having the latest MacBook Air M3 chip. So which one should I go with? Should I download ARM64 or the x64? Right, so it is not very complicated but it is quite simple. All Macs starting from M1 chip, they have an ARM architecture and we should go with ARM64 DMG. But in case you have a doubt, I'm going to show you a very handy command to determine the hardware architecture of your Mac and explain how to choose the right software for your machine. Let me open terminal and type this particular command, u name hyphen m, press enter. See, the output is ARM64. So it's very clear we have to download the ARM64 version on my machine at least. Okay, this version I'm talking about. Okay, if you get the output as x86 underscore 64 here on typing this particular command, then you should go with this particular installer, which is x64 DMG. So the uname utility tells about the machine architecture. This command is useful for determining the type of processor your system is using, which can be important for software compatibility. So I'll download the ARM64 installer. Let me just click on it. So it will start downloading. Okay, it's a very uh, fairly simple process. So it is actually installing Java on my machine. Let us wait and then it should be done. Perfect. Let me go to my finder. So yeah, this is the utility of what I was talking about. USR libexec java underscore home. Let me just close it. Okay, so this is the download. Let me just open it. It is showing as a PKG file. Let me double click on it. Okay, so I can see this particular installer. I'll click on continue. How do you want to install the software? Install for all the users. Let me click on this continue again. So now it is saying standard install on Macintosh. Okay. Click on the install. Now it is asking for the password. Let me type my password here. Perfect. So it is installing. And it's fairly simple. Install has been succeeded. Perfect. I'll click on the close button. Now, so we have successfully installed Java on our machine, which is our step one. So it is also asking me, do you want to move this JDK installer to the bin? Since I've already installed Java, I don't need this installer in my download folder. So I'll simply move it to bin. Okay, so my download folder is also empty now. Let me close it. Now, what are we going to do next? We are going to dive into an important topic, which is setting the Java underscore home environment variable. So if you have just installed Java on your Mac and you might be wondering, do I really need, need to set this particular variable up? Well, I'm here to clear up the confusion and explain why it is beneficial. Even though modern IDEs like Eclipse and IntelliJ IDEA, they can often detect your JDK automatically. First things first, 
what is the java underscore home environment variable simply put it's a variable that tells your system where java is installed many tools and scripts rely on this particular variable to find the java development kit or jdk now let's see why this setting is extremely important okay so why do you want to set java underscore home environment variable couple of reasons consistency across tools many build tools like maven gradle and some of the command and utilities they use java underscore home to locate the jdk so setting this variable ensures that all these tools consistently use the same jdk installation and second very important avoid potential issues some applications or scripts they might not detect the jdk correctly without java underscore home being set which can lead to configuration problems and third development environments so when working with multiple projects or switching between different jdk versions having java underscore home set ensures that all the projects use the correct version okay now let's see how to set a java underscore home variable on mac so on a mac machine instead of using gui we can also use a terminal to interact with the os now if we talk about this terminal so terminal has different names like command line interpreter also called as command line interface or cli or even called as shell and it allows user to interact with the operating system by typing commands into a text based interface the command line interpreter processes these commands executes them and displays the output or results directly within the terminal window so when you open the terminal on mac os the terminal you see by default is called as zshell or zsh as we can see here okay to see the version of zsh type zsh hyphen hyphen version let me press enter okay i can see the version is 5.9 so as of mac os catalina and above apple has made zsh or z shell the default login shell and interactive shell replacing the previous default shell which is bash so we don't have to work on the bash terminal anymore now let's talk about the utility usr libxc java underscore home so as i've already shown you this is a command that is incredibly useful because it helps you to locate the installed java version on your system okay so open the terminal window and let me type this command again i'll simply i don't have to type this command in fact i'll simply press the up arrow key okay and i'll press enter this time okay so previously we didn't get any output because my java was not installed but now after installing java i can see the version of java which is installed on my machine which is this one okay so if you have multiple java versions installed on your machine you will see multiple versions here itself and now we can choose out of multiple versions which version do we want to go with as the default one now in order to set the java underscore home variable we will require a dot z dot z sh rc file let me show you okay so let's talk about this z sh rc file so this file is hidden it starts with dot and every time you start a new terminal it it is located in your home directory so its main purpose is to configure and customize the behavior of your z shell so what are these four uh, reasons actually the very first thing is environment variables such as java underscore home path and other settings that programs can use second it can be used for prompt customization for example how your command prompt looks then we can uh, talk about shell options for example settings that control shell behavior and features and finally functions and scripts these are those custom commands or scripts that we want to use so here's a simple example to make it more clearer this is a sample uh, you can say contents of dot zsh rc file so we can see we can set the environment variables here we can add some directory to the path we can even create some alias for some frequently used commands or we can customize your shell prompt so there are a couple of things that we can do with this dot zsh file rc file so if we talk about dot zsh rc files in summary what are the three reasons that we use it for first automate setup we automatically configure your environment every time you open the terminal second consistency it ensures that your terminal behaves the same way every time and third efficiency it saves time by avoiding the need to manually set up your environment each session so in summary if we talk about dot zsh rc file is a powerful configuration file that makes your command line experience more efficient and personalized by automating and customizing your shell environment so if you don't have a dot zsh rc file your z shell will use its default settings however you can easily create one to start customizing your shell environment here is my home directory now let me run the command pwd on my machine it stands for present working directory so 
users piyush gupta is my home directory to see its con contents okay let me just clear the console first to see its contents let me run the command ls hyphen a okay so i can see i don't have this dot shrc file so using a i can even see the hidden files so we will create it using the touch command touch command is used to create a file inside mac and it's very simple just run the command touch space file name so i'll give the correct name as touch dot zshrc <coughs> so i simply press enter so this touch command has simply created this zsh file note that we have used a dot before dot zshrc as it is supposed to be a hidden file and on mac all the hidden files start with a dot now we will set the java underscore environment variable in this particular file to edit this particular file you have a couple of options you can either use text editors like vi or nano or you can ev either open it directly with a graphical editor like text edit i'll have to sip some glass of water okay so now you can choose the nano editor if you are comfortable working with your zsh terminal but if you are a beginner or if you want to open zshrc file in its default application then simply go with open in my case i'll simply open like this open dot zshrc i'll press enter okay so it has opened this particular file let me just zoom it okay now we can see that the file is opened in text editor since i just created this file it is currently empty in your particular case you could see a bunch of information on it now let's set the java underscore home environment variable unlike windows mac os doesn't have a gui for managing environment variables so whatever environment variables you want to add yourself you have to add them directly to your zshrc file this file what i'm talking about okay right so here's the syntax you have to use i'll simply open my whiteboard yeah so this is the syntax which is export name of the variable equal to and the actual value so we want to make sure that there are no spaces before and after the equal to so there is no space here and no space here so do you remember this usr libx java underscore utility i just talked about in my terminal so we'll use that same path inside our export command okay i'll simply press up arrow key up arrow key yeah so this is my path that i'll use after after equal to so my command will become okay let me just copy it right click copy i'll go to my oh, this is how i'll create my environment variable let me type export space java underscore home equal to i'll do command v okay so export is the keyword that okay let me just zoom in first yeah i'll have to make it smaller okay so export is the keyword that makes the variable available to the environment and java underscore home is the name of the variable and after the equal to is the path of my java installation additionally it's crucial to add java's bin directory to your path so that you can run java commands from anywhere we did the same thing on windows also when we added the path of bin directory inside path variable and on mac you can do this with by adding the following line i'll simply press enter i'll type export i'll do space again and then i'll type path equal to dollar java underscore home slash bin colon dollar path note that this java underscore home is the same variable that i've just created here okay and i have to make it small i'll go here okay and i'll simply do command s to save my dot shrc file so we are prepending java underscore home slash bin to the already existing path variable by placing dot dollar java underscore home slash bin at the beginning you ensure that the system looks in the jdk's bin directory first when executing commands like java or java c and we'll simply save and close save i've already done let me just close this particular file so we have just edited the dot zshrc file successfully but our current terminal won't recognize the new setting now if you want to ensure that the changes take effect in the current terminal session you can optionally run the command source space tilde forward slash dot z s h r c i'll simply press enter 
right so this command is completely optional or i can i could have actually simply close my terminal and reopen it again and i could not I, i really don't need to run this command in that particular case here tilde sign refers to the home directory okay so to verify that the java underscore variable is set correctly all you can do is simply type echo dollar java underscore home type enter and this is the path of my java underscore home variable that is being set correctly great that's it friends our environment variable java underscore home is successfully set now hope you have liked this particular video please like it if you have found it valuable and consider subscribing for more technical content and stay tuned piyush gupta your virtual coach signing off